I'm yet to experience this, but I want to hear the roar of the crowd. The Australian gaming landscape has changed dramatically in recent years. With the introduction of esports, competitive gaming has evolved from internet cafe rivalries to arenas full of cheering fans and millions of viewers worldwide. But as impressive as these events have become, I knew there had to be more to this world of digital combat than just bright lights and fast paced gameplay. So to find out what it's really like to be a professional gamer, Throwdown Photography teamed up with Mindfreak and their Overwatch roster, who despite being assembled only one week prior to the Contenders Series season, found themselves preparing for the grand final against a veteran organisation on one of the biggest stages in Australian esports. As with any other competitive sport, esports athletes have to train to maintain their skill level. In the lead up to a competition, this training is ramped up in the form of a boot camp, where team managers and coaches will bring players together to train and discuss strategy all under one roof. But as fascinating as it was watching the team practice, speaking to each other in what sounded like another language at times, I was curious to know how people reacted to them being part of a professional esports team. I guess, I guess. They just don't really, they don't know how it works, right? Like they, a lot of people don't know if, if, if you're a programmer, that, if that means you're good at a heap of games or, or like, you know, one game, they don't really know, like, like a lot of people think, I guess there's no skill involved in video games. And I guess because, you know, you're not, you're not running around and it's not seen as a traditional sport. A lot of people just don't understand the, like the skills and like, and what it takes to be good. People think that, that it's like a really cool thing. And then people be like, being serious. Before they start talking about like, oh, like uh, that thing on the television on oh, Fortnite, but no, no, that one. They just see it as something we do for a bit of fun, you know, which a lot of people do. But I think I think it's much bigger than that than, um, than a lot of people realize. And no matter what I can say, people usually don't quite understand how big a deal it can actually be. <laughs> They're like, what? What was that? And they have no idea that esports requires any sort of coaching. They think like, what? It's just video games, right? It's just for you're just playing what, what kind of coaching could you possibly provide? The, the average person doesn't really like understand how much goes into it, like behind the scenes, I guess. They, I don't know, they don't really understand. Well, the people that I speak to at least don't really understand the whole industry, let alone what goes into the management side of things. But while it wasn't surprising that many people are still confused by the concept of professional gaming, there was no denying the amount of work that had gone into making the team what it is today. As a coach, people don't understand. Coaches are like, oh, you just watch, you just spectate scrims and you're there for an hour and you, you kind of just go, go away. But uh, if you, for, for myself, I watch, in the, I wake up in the morning, catch up on Overwatch League, watch the VODs there, watch what they're doing, analyze it for a bit, have lunch, then I'm watching our VODs from the previous night, preparing for our review, which can take from anywhere from an hour to a couple. I make sure I keep my sleeping pattern good. Like sometimes it can be a bit addictive and you stay up late, wake up late, and it's yeah, throwing out my patterns bad. I mean, it's like esports in general is an always on industry, but yeah, from a managerial standpoint, you have to be switched on 24 7. It's just like you can get a, like a message at 10 pm and it has to get sorted by midnight. Like, it'll have to be sorted ASAP. If you're not like there prepared for it, like someone has to do it. If it doesn't get done, then things fall apart. So, yeah, you've always kind of got to be there and ready to just yeah, tackle whatever comes your way. I've had my fair share of downfalls dealing with stress because it's just rough. It's just so rough putting in so many hours. And like having to consistently be so competitive, you, you, it's you've always got to want to win. And like 
if that ever goes away, it starts to kind of pile on you, and like it takes its toll mentally. It's probably probably just like the hours uh, hours you need to put in. Like like we we, we scrim four hours a night. We do one hour of lot of so like five hours a night, right? But it's like 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 if that was a regular job, you'd probably be getting paid like reasonably well. But if you translate hours put into like hours made from esports, probably get like less than a dollar an hour sort of thing. So and, and obviously you don't do it for the money, but when you're putting that much time into something and like neglecting maybe working another job in that time, then yeah, it can sort of suck because everything's really uncertain. It's just all the responsibilities onto you. Just like trying to stay high level is just, it's it's a lot of like, a lot of grinding, a lot of like just constant, constant, like there's, there's no like slowdown. Even in off season, you still have to play. You have to put in like wild numbers just to keep up with like everything, like all your, every other player and stuff, so, yeah. I think like the amount of time, um, putting in like five five plus hours a day, every day, for months is, is, a, is a lot of work I suppose. Eventually when the practice was done and the video reviews were completed, Mind Freak's boot camp came to a close, at which point there was only one game left to be played. The grand final at the Melbourne Esports Open. interviews and signing sessions, the moment everyone had been waiting for had arrived. Years of hard work and sacrifice had all led to this, the chance to be crowned Australian eSports champions. All that was left to do was play. Despite their efforts, Mind Freak were unable to come away victorious in their professional Overwatch debut. But while it wasn't the result they had hoped for, there is so much more to be taken away from their rise to the top and what it means for esports in Australia. This is a team of young gamers who took something they loved and did something incredible with it. A team assembled on short notice, they defied the odds and made it all the way to one of the biggest stages in Australian esports. Their hard work and dedication, something which is often misunderstood, turned into a moment that many can only dream of experiencing.